your life. It should be a revival, Christian. You should be kingdom minded, a kingdom, you know, uh, citizen, and live for God, Jesus, that makes you a revival Christian, beloved. Because, you know, God, these people uh, always wanted to be intimate with God. Because man, it's designed to, man is designed to, uh, you know, live in the presence of God. See, now you make a, suppose all of you, when I saw there are many cars there. Suppose somebody brings a sports car. What for it is designed? Tell me, tell me, sir. Race, speed. It is not for slow, not for a person like me. It's for somebody different guy. You should, once you get into that, you should push that thing, you know, zzz, it goes. So it is designed for some purpose. Likewise, man is designed to be in the presence of God. That's what he is designed. That's why in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, God has put him in the garden of Eden so that in Eden, God, his presence is there. I told you in the past, I don't know, but Eden speaks about five different meanings. Eden always has five different meanings. One is a spot on the earth. Another one is open door. The third one is presence. Fourth is a moment. A fifth one is a delightful pleasure. That is called Eden. A spot, an open door, a presence, a moment, delightful pleasure. Five different meanings for one word. That is the beauty of Hebrew language. God expresses his heart in five dimensions by speaking one word. So God kept it. It's an environment God has created for Adam to live and enjoy. That's why, you know, you need to love the presence of God. Because Psalm 84.10 says, One day in your course, better than a thousand. One day in your course. When Sunday was leading the worship, Lord, your presence is here. This is what we want. We want your presence. I love your presence, Lord. Early in the morning when you get up, you should always crave for the presence of God. Lord, I need your presence. Once his presence comes, it's a different story for us. You are a, you are a six pack or twenty pack, you cry. It doesn't matter how much strong you are, because in his presence, there is a tenderness that comes in. So, I always love to be in the presence of God. The presence of God makes you absolutely joyful. Early in the mornings, wherever you are, you, can, you should ask, Lord, I want to live in your presence. Moses said, if your presence is not with us, we will not go. That's the deal for our lives. Because you might ask me, see, everywhere God is present. He is an omnipresent God. But that presence was, is passive. You can activate his presence by, you know, uh, worshiping, worshiping him and praising him. We invited his presence in this place because uh, we invited his presence by worshipping and elevating his name. That's why Jesus said, where two or three gather in my name, I am there. Today, tonight, Jesus is present here. His, his Holy Spirit is present here right now. It's not me preaching. I, he's taking my voice and my thoughts, but he is ministering to you. Because he loves all of us. He wants that you should be strong. You should be great and mighty. And be blessed. That is what. Uh, 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 that's what the Lord wants. So the intimacy. You know. Um, God is restoring that. Beloved. God is restoring the tabernacle of David. In the past. The, the tabernacle of Moses. We have three, three different uh, uh, places. Outer. The holy place and the most holy place. Once in a year, people should go to the most holy place. That too, the, the, uh, the high priest will go into his presence and he will have a bell. He should, they should tie a bell for him and a rope. Because nobody can get into his presence. The Ark of Covenant. 
and uh, this guy goes uh, you know in such a way with trembling because the deal is the moment you enter into his presence if you do something wrong you are done so so if he dies instantly in that uh, most holy place how who will go and get him nobody can go so they said why should we go and die there so better we put a rope for him and if he dies there they will push him out of that uh, most holy place and they were very keenly they used to listen whether this guy is still alive or not it's not good thing so if you put me some bells here and there while i'm preaching and whether this guy is still there or not it doesn't make sense actually but they used to keep the bells so that whenever he used to go here and there to have sprinkle the blood and they used to oh still is alive still is alive that is the awesome presence of god but god said you know now i want to cut off everything because of my son jesus christ today we can enter into his presence without any shadow of doubt you know we can just go into his presence you know there is no barriers for us you can call him abba father that's why in galatians you know he is the word of god says uh, he poured out the spirit of his son so that you can call him abba father you can call him abba father because abba the word abba means you can as a child you call him and father you call him with respect you know so you can call him abba father so being a son is a one of the greatest experiences for uh, us you know i can tell you one story um, there was a, a guy who was running a, 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 a great uh, charity in england and uh, he wanted uh, the appointment of a king king of king i think king uh, uh, you know i don't know which king that was but he took an appointment and up that timing was only just for uh, 10 minutes maybe just 10 minutes that's all not more than that he was many many other appointments so he was he was ready he was absolutely the best of his suits everything and prepared so well for the 10 minutes the moment he goes inside how he should greet the king how he should talk to him how he should present him once king says yes he gets millions of pounds for his charity that's that's the, that's what he was expecting so he went inside while he was 5 uh, uh, minutes were over he was just trying to explain what exactly the charity is all of a sudden king edward that time he was prince sir he came from the other other uh, side of the door he said dad then king said sorry gentlemen i have to attend to my son so Five minutes over to fix that uh, toy. It took three minutes, and after three minutes, he said, "Sorry, gentlemen, I have only two minutes for you. Whatever you want to say, you say." Then he said, "King, Your Majesty, this is what we are doing. Please think about it. If you say yes, many people will be blessed." Then finally, he got a note from the uh, king, and he got his, uh, you know, money. But uh, after coming out. he said he told one of our spiritual uh, mentors he said alan spiritual father alan he said alan it's something to be a son and a petitioner something to be a son and a petitioner a petitioner will always try to impress uh, you know the person who is uh, making the petition but a son doesn't need to impress his father because he is the heir of everything so today i want to encourage you beloved the the lord invites us into his presence because we are his sons that's why the 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 change is totally is different catastrophic change because of the blood of jesus christ so and also you know psalm 1611 says in his presence there is fullness of joy and pleasures forever more in his presence there is fullness of joy i mean there is no there is there is no i mean uh, you know what you have, what i can say is uh, 
there is no dearth of joy. It's, there is fullness of joy. It's not just, you know, you, can, you cannot measure it. 80%, 90%. If you go to some other place, you can rate it. It could be good, it could be 80%, 90%. But in His presence, there is fullness of joy. Now let me tell you the joy, how you measure. Now, as a Christian, you always, uh, you always, uh, you know, uh, you never, you should not say that, you know, uh, I'm sad. I'm sad. You are, I'm sad. You might, because emotions are there. I mean, I don't say that uh, there are no emotions uh, uh, for, for us. Always there. But let me tell you, once you, once you are saved, uh, you got the cake. The cake of joy. So now we have a, this is the cake. This is the cake of joy. Please, uh, I need your attention. This is the joy. So in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And there will be icing also on the cake, right? Icing on the cake. Some people like strawberry icing. Some people like, you know, various. So this is the icing on the cake. So this is the cake, this is the cake, icing. So this cake is the joy of the Lord. That is already always there with you. So if you are happy, emotions, happy, joy is a decision. Happiness, sadness is an emotion. So now what you say, if you are happy, I am joyfully happy. Right? Suppose if you are sad, if you are sorrowful, I am joyfully, I am sad. But the joy will never leave us. Because as long as you are in the presence of God, the promise of the word of God is in his presence there is fullness of joy. You cannot deny that in your life. That's why I always say that, how are you pastor? If I am really not happy, I am joyfully not happy today. That's all. Because you cannot say that I am not happy. I don't want to use all negative words because they have some bacterial effect on our body. So I don't want any of those things. I always say, my daughter says, Dad, are you tired? I look at her and says, little, not much. Because I never say that I am tired. Why would I say I am tired? I am little tired. I will get back again. Because you never confess those words in your life so that that will have a, a negative impact on us. So, in his presence, and also in Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The moment you receive the joy, that will be your strength to face your problems. You cannot face problems with tension. You face problems with joy. That's all. Let me tell you, uh, when we, I was getting back home last time, you know, uh, getting back home and uh, uh, Emirates was overbooked. Overbooked. I don't know, I have my ticket, but uh, there was some commotion going on, and you are uh, in the line, and the three, zone three, zone four, somebody comes, get back in line, and somebody says something. All those things were happening. But uh, then they said, Sir, you need to go to that place, uh, customer care place. I said, What? Am I going today or not? Now, the word of God says you should be joyfully happy. You know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now you should not lose your strength talking to people. Somebody asked me, what is going to happen? What's happening, sir, here? I said, something good is going to happen. Don't worry. Something good is going to happen. When I was standing, some lady said, sir, you need to come, uh, you need to be in the queue. I said, you know, wherever I stand, the queue begins from there. <laughs> so don't worry. This is not the queue. That is the queue. I'm just standing uh, outside the queue. So then after some time, I asked the girl, what's the matter? What's happening? Then she just went to me and said, sir, you are elevated to business class. <laughs> Joy has gone out of bonds. <laughs> Immediately I looked at those people. I said, okay, blessings, you know. <laughs> blessings, you know. Then, you know, then I went inside, uh, that is 380 Emirates, you know, uh, 380 you know, flight is, uh, you go to upstairs actually. Elevation means real elevation. 
Then I said, the joy of the Lord. I mean, you, you face the situations, it happens, it doesn't matter, but you need to hold your strength, enjoying God all the time. You know? I said one, you know, you guys know, I mean, uh, when I was in states, uh, people, young people said, you know, Pastor, you need to have some slang words to talk to people, otherwise they think you are out of, uh, uh, out of, you know, what you call, what is that, uh, out of uh, place. Uh. Then I said, what does those slang words tell me? Good words or bad words, I don't know. Then he said, if you want to say somebody good, you said, you are over the top. Uh. Then I said, okay, over the top is good. Uh. Then they said, uh, if you want to start, you can usually, you, you need not say, let's start the uh, things and all, let's roll. Oh. Then I said, let's roll. Then, suppose if you're, if you're just relaxing and all, somebody asks you, what's up, you can just say, I'm chilling. <laughs> just chilling. I said, okay, let me say, no, let me use these words whenever there is applicable and all. And uh, Natalie, you know, one of our executive director of OFI, when we went there, she, she was asking me, Hey, Mohan, what's up? I said, I'm just chilling. <laughs> she was laughing and laughing and laughing. I said, what's the matter? Anything wrong going on? <laughs> oh, no, Mohan, that doesn't suit you much, you know. That's for boys, yeah, girls and boys. I said, so what? Uh, then I coined, I said, you know, I just met. See, whenever you, you should be creative in the kingdom of God. Uh, you should be always creative. Then you know what I said? If you accept Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, you can chill in Christ for a lifetime. <laughs> right? Got it? Chill in Christ for a lifetime. So you take those words. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I never allow the, the, the world to dominate my joy. I never allow the world to rob my joy. Because... The devil wants to rob our joy. You sit in the morning, somebody speaks good about you, and <coughs> you will be very, very happy. I saw the recent, uh, you know, uh, what you call that, uh, sharing in the in the Facebook. I mean, somebody was tagged me in that uh, thing. One of the girls, uh, you know, in our church said, "Our you pastor, you are the best and the coolest." Then I said, wow, this is a great statement, you know. She made my day for the whole day. I was enjoying. I'm the best and the coolest. And it's, it has not come from an old man, come from a young girl, and you're the best and the coolest. See, joy, don't allow the joy to mislead you, beloved. That's what the word of God says. Live in his presence. Moses realized that, you know, you... Uh, you, if you don't come with us, you will not go. You will not go anywhere, Lord. Because if you are not with us, we are a failure. If you are with us, we are 100% successful, Lord. So God promised uh, Moses, not only just uh, his presence, Exodus 33, uh, chapter 33, verse 14, I will, I will, I will, give, I will, you know, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. The word says, I will give you rest. So in, in, if you are in his presence, the most important thing is, you will have rest, beloved. Exodus 33, 14. The rest, the rest is the most important thing. People, people work for rest, vacation rest especially us i don't know about canada they said that uh, long vacations friday to monday the best day in the best season in their lives because they want that to happen so the rest gee, god promised us rest rest means you need not struggle don't work for rest work from rest you work from rest. You relax and work. You know, if you go to the, uh, the cemetery, graveyards, you'll see that there is one word, you know, what is the rest in peace. Rest in peace. Because this guy is gone, that's why he's rested in peace. Rest in peace for the soul. What I said, I said, 
for a Christian, we should have that word on our T-shirt. If I may have a T-shirt, R.I.P. Rest in peace. No problem. Whatever happens, no problem. There is a problem with the North Korea firing missile. Rest in peace. Trump got elected. Rest in peace. What is that is going to happen? They are on the seat, sir. But Jesus is on the throne. Because your God is on the throne, you can rest and relax. Hallelujah. You need not struggle. Because if you start struggling, then the devil will have an edge over you. You should say, devil, I will never struggle for anything. I work hard. Because the Bible says the pattern of your life, you should work hard. Nothing, you rest means don't pick up your, you know, what you call that bed sheet and sleep all through the day. You relax here. You relax here. Enjoy God. Somebody speaks something to you, you just leave it like that. Yes. Most of the people, you know what, they, they take every word. How many of you know the donkey story? Donkey story. Don't know? Even if you know, don't tell that person. Let me tell you the story. Donkey story. The donkey story, the donkey once it has become, get, it, it was getting older. It was getting older. So what happened was, the owner thought, if I leave this donkey, somebody will kill. So I don't want to uh, leave this donkey like that. Let me... Uh, let me kill, you know, mercy killing, like, you know, put that, you know, all the mud on the donkey. So he took uh, the donkey to the pit and pushed her inside and started uh, putting the mud on that. Donkey has a great quality. The quality is, whenever something falls on that, it makes a shake. It shakes. So every time the donkey was the shaking. So this guy was putting, shaking. Putting, shaking. So what happens when you shake? You tell me, now you know what is the... It comes. One step, elevation. Another time, everything, the, dog, the, the guy was putting the, the, the mud on her, the dirt, everything. The donkey was shaking, coming up, coming up. Finally, the donkey walked out of the pit. You know. That is what the Christian life is. If somebody speaks to you, don't allow that word to dominate your thought process. Reject the word. Reject it. Somebody says you're fit for nothing. No, no, no. I'm fit for everything. Because the word of God says, I will do all things in Christ who strengthens me. The, 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 the you know, the, sick, the word comes and the antidote goes off. I do all things. You know, you don't have, you know, you are, you know, you are a loser. No, in Christ, I am more than a conqueror. That's all. You look, you know, there are so many troubles coming up. No way. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. That's it. I mean, your, your, your attitude makes you successful in life, beloved. How you apply the word of God in your life. As I was telling you, you receive this, you know, you, you got this word. You might say, Lord, if, uh, sir, pastor was speaking such a nice word. It's not a nice word. It's a life-changing word. It's a life-changing word. Because once you receive this word, the devil knows that, you know, I don't want, uh, you know, what you call that, uh, uh, when you make a call, you give a rating. It's excellent. Good, very good, fair, poor, all those things. I don't want those ratings. I want that. This is the word of God. This has got the power to change our lives. Power to take us to our elevation. Power to fulfill the purposes of God in our lives. Power to overpower the devil. Overcome the giants in our lives. That's why this is the word of God which has got the power so you need to apply the word into your lives because I want to see Canada, this state, this uh, country and I want to see this uh, Toronto city will be, you know, will be engulfed by the glory of God. And it, it will start from you. 
There are so many other good churches, but uh, you should be the catalyst for the moment uh, what God wants to bring to the city of Toronto, Nevada. Your prayers, your life, your attitude, that will make a difference. The way you see things, that will make a big difference. You know, the next point, I... Uh, the next point, uh, faithful in little. The next point, I think uh, I'll just uh, make this and I'll, uh, I'll see how I go. Faithful in little. David was tending his father's sheep. David was tending his father's sheep. He says in 1 Samuel 17, 34, I think, he says, uh, uh, you know, once a lion came and uh, I took the, the sheep uh, out of lion's mouth and a bear came, I killed the bear. Killing a lion, killing a bear with bare hands doesn't, doesn't work out that way in the world. It needs something extra special. David was willing to lay his life for his father's sheep. How faithful we are in little things. People say, Lord, if you give me uh, big things, I can handle it. God says, start from the little. Start from the little. Humble beginnings are always good. You know, when I, when I was a, a village boy, in, in one of the villages in, our, in, in India, uh, doesn't know how to speak English. Yeah? And I said, Lord, how could this come to me? When I came to city, and these uh, Methodist pastors uh, came to my house, and they were praying, Thy kingdom come, Thou art the o king. I said, Lord, this is even worse, you know. I thought this is normal. This, they are making my life even miserable to, to understand. But God, I, I, I was always looking at God. God, for you, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. You can change people's lives. You are the one who can, who can change, who can elevate people if you want. Now when I preach to the thousands of people, you know, like uh, wherever I go, 5,000, 7,000 people, when I was talking to them, the pastor comes and tells me, Wow, Mohan, your English is so good. I said, is this guy is real or teasing me? Because we know how we, we talk. But she says, no, no, that was a good word. I said, thank you so much, Lord. Then I thank God, because he is the source of every good thing in my life, beloved. He's the source. Never allow, you know, you know, when small things, when you go through, never allow the complacency in your, in your life. Give your best even to the small things. When I was uh, doing my Bible college, you know, my dean, he was a, an Englishman. So he asked me to be a part of a team and some guy is heading the team. It hurt me a lot. I was really hurt about that because I, by the time I was uh, secretary of science fellowship, I was working, I was an officer in the state government, and also I was uh, the son of the senior pastor chairman science fellowship. Now what else you want uh, to become a little elevated? Uh, and then this guy was very cool and casual. He said, you know, you need to work under this guy who is one of our uh, village pastors and said, uh, clean the toilets today. The toilets, I think Sureka has seen the toilets and uh, even Vijay has seen some of you guys, the public toilets in our, in our uh, campus, you know. You know how public toilets will be, all children will come and do all sorts of nonsense, you know. You don't even feel like going inside actually. Now my job is to clean the toilet. Oh God, this is, uh, is it God's work or devil's work? You know, because how could I, I clean uh, the toilet? So I said, okay, I was not happy, I was hurt, I was angry because uh, then in my anger, in my anger, I was uh, cleaning the floor, I was putting more effort, how could he do that? <laughs> it's not good for him, it's not fair, it's not good. While I was putting that extra effort, 
the floor was getting better and better. <laughs> you see, the floor was getting... Then I realized, wow, you know, even I was not happy, but the floor was getting better. And uh, I finished that. Then I said, okay, let me do it. And I finished, the Lord spoke to me. This is the best beginning in your life, Moha. If you want to reach the top, don't go by lift. You, you start there. God will see the heart attitude in the world. He will look at our heart attitude. How faithful we are in the little things. In our daily life, how much you are giving your time to the Lord. How much you are talking to, when you are talking to people, are the people are happy with you. Or the people are really blessed by you. You know, when you say the word blessings, I always say, if I know, I, I think whenever I write to somebody, I put the word blessings in the last. You know why that word? It has got the power. It has got the power. Whenever I see somebody, I say blessings. Because it has got five dimensional power. Let me, if you write down that, so that you never miss saying that word to the people. You know, the first thing is blessings. The first meaning is incre uh, fruitfulness. Being fruitful. First meaning. The second one is increase. Second one is increase. The third one is prosperity. Good word. Prosperity. The fourth one is victory over enemies. The fifth one is favor of God. Fine. So when you are when you are releasing that word blessings, you are releasing five things in somebody's things into somebody's life. That's why I always say, bless you, blessings that will cause fruitfulness, increase, prosperity, victory or, victory or enemies, and favor of God. So that's why I said, blessings to all of you. So if you receive that, you will have those blessings in your life, Spirit of God. So I just want to encourage you, be faithful in little. Whatever is there, David was willing to lay his life for one sheep. One sheep. He said, let me put my life to that. I was telling, Lord, if I am there, what would I do? I would jump onto a tree and let the one, one, he said, I am greater than, bigger than one sheep. But David said, no. My father has assigned a work to me. I want to be faithful. Then God said, I found a man after my own heart. I found a man after my own heart. You know, he, he, I wanted these qualities in him. Now he is going to be the king of Israel. It's not your strength. It's not your knowledge. It's not your which college you are in. Are you in region? Are you in ORU? It doesn't matter to God. God looks at the heart. His brothers, they were trained in 